those dots look like atoms, dragon. And you know atoms. what human beings are like, especially trolls. Yeah. We go to an alien civilization, we teach oh, them nuclear weaponry, and we convince them to blow themselves up, and then we just go lol and move on. <laughs> yes, well, that already happened. What what Pat is is pointing out here is truly fascinating, and it, it's absolutely true. And Pat, I I, owe, I still owe you a response uh, that I'm 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 thinking um, I'm. I'm I'm replying very, very soon, and it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting for sure. And yes, there is a deeper interest into that as well. But what he's saying, identity verification is a thousands of years old problem. That's absolutely true. Uh, the Incas were working with with the colored knots, right? They had different. They had like this girdle, this belt around their waist with with different uh, different threads of different colors with different knots, and the knots would be you know a code. So whenever they would deliver a message, you know, down to Peru, people could verify if this message is actually, you know, authentic by, you know, having having the matrix to identify the number and the strings of the of the knots that were placed on the thread, so they knew what the message was containing, if it was authentic or not. Which is truly crazy to think about. It's like an old method of encryption and so mm -hmm. the cylinder seals of course were doing exactly that because they were unique and blockchain is doing the same thing right it's kind of putting information into a unique container it's a unique mm -hmm. seal it's a unique pledge you you can't you can't break this code otherwise you will notice yeah. it and therefore you know it's forged and having mm -hmm. a unique digital imprint and every certificate is is different makes it also valuable in terms of hey as soon as i have something that i can verify will always be unique it, it will appreciate value over time if you put a watch into the ground even if it's a ten dollar watch it's a unique piece in a couple of years that watch is going to be you know valuable it will appreciate value in 50 years from now it will be even more hundreds from year, years from now it will be super valuable yeah and uh, scamming thing primitives do... with bitcoin you know you go down to a planet <laughs> <laughs> and you and you sell them Bitcoin. Bitcoin. And oh, yes, the block, it's on the blockchain, so it's fine. And they're oh, like, my oh, God. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll have the cryptocurrency have all our gold, all our food, all our water. We'll have this Bitcoin. It's like, okay, that's good. We'll, <laughs> we'll come back and we'll give you more. And then we sail up in our spaceship and we go, ha, 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 suckers. And they all stop. <laughs> that sounds like a Star Trek episode that yes, people yes, would actually cool. watch. Or an <laughs> I think it's a great episode. What are you talking Absolutely. No, but <laughs> it's well, just that I. It's just that idea, ladies and gentlemen, since we mm. don't know our origin story, we don't know how we came to be. For all we know, humanity was a flourishing civilization that got scammed by a bunch of aliens into wiping Probably. ourselves out with a Bitcoin mm. scheme. It's on <laughs> the blockchain. Um, I, I don't it's... think it was a Bitcoin scheme. More like, uh, if I go off about like all these all these theories it sounds more like uh somebody and then somebody some nice very alien greedy. comes along dragon and yeah. then helps us out because we've been yeah. scammed by other aliens well, i mean but, yes that is true that is true that is a that is a one thing but it's more it's more complicated like that but yes in simplistic terms it is and i do want to mention these cylinder seals and uh, that we see all in, in ancient ruins and even in just a regular iron copper or or even gold seals uh these things as coach mentions were at the time considered to were either kept in in secret vaults you know heavily protected under guard by priesthoods and you know they were only privy to those in the higher echelons of the priesthood that were initiated into it you know the common man was not privy to this knowledge that we are now exposed to to us this is like oh this is nice but and, and I can, and you can, with the knowledge of our modern day, mm. we can interpret it better. Yeah, because but... the, these things, these seals were meant to be understood mm. at a later time. Exactly. But in human history, that was the whole purpose of why they were etched in stone or in precious metals or 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 even just in anything that could last for thousands of years. These were made so that eventually people would remember, even if it was a fraction, remember something that would then lead to this trickling down of curiosity that would lead back to us discovering the truth eventually by ourselves. Well, but I'm, this thing is a I'm, slow process. 
Well, I'm of the view, Dragon, that when you don't know um, an answer to something and you need to have it answered, uh, the best thing you can do is is uh, make it up. This is why fantasy is a, a great way of, of explaining origins. That's why we have creation theories. That's why we have mm -hmm. evolution theories, because we need answers to questions. If we don't have the answer to the origin question, you know what people are like. They'll go stock raving mad and just kill each other, which is why, true, true. in my view, having a convincing story keeps us going. It's like bootstrapping uh, a civilization to get it to yeah. kick start. Uh, I think that's the same when it comes to the machines. We bootstrap yeah. the idea that they are alive when they're not, and that allows them to have that that ability to uh, yeah. uh, speak their minds, as it were, even though it's based mm -hmm. on a lie. True, but, you know, one thing I do consider to be interesting is, like, you know, when you say, you know, hey, when human beings don't have answers to the very important questions, they just make up shit. Uh, I think you're right about that, but also, what if you, we do know, a few people know the true answer, but they're the kind that are like, well, shit, if we tell this to everybody that we know right now, this thing will descend into chaos. So we might as well tell you half the truth, but then the other half make some shit up that sounds convincing enough with the with the truthful half. And now we have basically 200 different religions and yeah. people are killing each other over some shit somebody made yeah. up, you know. Yeah, and it's also like, years. I don't, we, we don't, you know, what, what the UN is doing is trying to, mm -hmm. to, to forge this world religion, which in mm -hmm. my opinion is also, it's like um, Esperanto, right? It, it's it's just not right. Everybody is, of course, entitled to have his his very personal interpretation of a mm -hmm. belief system, of a, of a religious practice and everything but we have to realize that there that there definitely was a powerful message from the past that we keep ignoring that we keep suppressing in an active way again this is not a conspiracy theory type of session that we're having here we're just we're just laying down you know the breadcrumbs that we're finding from history and they all tell a very compelling narrative that it's somehow connected again whether it's in architecture whether it's in stone whether it's in religious or spiritual beliefs whether it's in geometry in the very words they are using to define certain entities that were pivotal to the movement of their culture and the development of their society it's always the same names always the same words and the, the same thing is happening here Again, also the, the story of Enki, who is associated to Apollo, to this being who, who you know, who travels the earth with this handbag, right, is, is also very, very much related to the story of Enoch and the watchers and the seven sages there and the seven patriarchs that founded Jerusalem and, and so on and so forth. And let's not forget one thing. If, if then we travel to India, we have uh, King Ashoka, who is, to be said, according to Maori tradition, to the New Zealand folklore and tales down there who is the the ancestor of the of the maori king and in maori tradition we have the three handbags or the three bags of and of one is of light one is of darkness and one is of pursuit the three mm -hmm. handbags of knowledge the te kete tuatea te kete tuauri and te kete aranaui you know these three handbags brought to them from the descendants of King Ashoka, who is again mm -hmm. also connected to the Assyrian gods and the Sumerian gods, these people came down there and taught them geometry, taught them, you know, kind of canal, canal systems, water irrigation. We have the same literature also in Buddhist, in the Buddhist holy book that we have the, the three pitaka, so we have the three bags of knowledge. Again, whether you're, you're going to the, you know, to the Almex, Turkey, um, to Peru, uh, to India, to, even so far, uh, you know, it, even if you push yourself to New Zealand, you always have this bag with this very often also depicted with this tree of life that is, is brought by these gigantic beings. And if this would be just a water bucket and this is a gigantic being because the bucket is, uh, you know, close to being as, as big as the hand. So then this bucket is, is gigantic, right? It's not a regular bucket, guys. It's a mm. container of uh, you know unique information some some data that was so valuable that all these people deemed it very necessary to put this into stone and and to you know engrave it in very hard stone so it can last forever because for for these people putting something into stone meant this was information that was deemed to be necessary to be you know stored for eternity 
uh, never to be you know altered and tapered with so for them it was vital to give on this type of, of information hmm. although i will say ladies and gentlemen that lands with the greatest stories often have the greatest impact i mean the united states of america is a great I idea of this uh, mm -hmm. the idea of the the national origins the the foundations of the united states are within uh, reach how it started and in a sense how it developed was that innate belief in the the united states of america and in its people despite the fact that they on occasion disagreed on on where to go forward to the point of of actually doing each other in which is never nice but the point is folks <laughs> george carlin said this america's run on bullshit and you could yeah. say a grand narrative is a fantasy designed to give people purpose and meaning in their lives so that they can keep on going and keep on growing. And when you rob that from people, when you rob people of their bullshit and showcase the entire world in its horror, you are inflicting a pain upon people that is worse than death itself. That's why so many people uh, value their beliefs because they give those beliefs give those people purpose and meaning in their yeah. their lives not everyone can be reality based because it can be quite frightening no yeah that's true i mean you know sometimes sometimes the truth is quite 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 shocking Unsettling you know, in, the, in the beginning I mean, yes yeah i mean i remember you know i, I do remember when you're I an anton and anthill planet earth is a speck of dust in a cause in a galaxy which is like a sandbox oh, yeah. within millions upon millions of sandboxes if you support evolution mm -hmm. theory you are a tiny ant on a tiny mound in a yeah. tiny part of a massive sandbox and there are hundreds of millions of sandboxes is that mm -hmm. going to to encourage you to keep on going and keep on growing as a well yeah cuz cuz the well, yeah, the reason why is because if you learn the simple... Yes, I know, I know, it crushes you, you psychologically, the, yeah. right, to know yeah, that but, everything but, is it, right? Yeah, but, but here's the thing. Like, first, you how do you how do you solve a problem? First, you point out... You, you highlight out the sim Yeah, you highlight it. Then you present the evidence that further exemplifies it. Then you go through the same stage that a drug addict goes through, which is that you detox... You reflect, you let the information come in. You allow, first off, you got to allow the fear to overcome you. So that way, the, all the barriers are, let me explain. You got to do it until all the barriers break. And now you feel nothing. And then the truth dawns on you. And then you feel at peace. Because while you said that, you know, basically you're an ant on an ant hill of a speck of sand in a sea in a sea uh, of sand enveloped in an ocean of infinity then i can come back and say well what is that quote that's called i am that i am a lot yeah, of these some, hey, some, wait 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 yeah. wait wait hold on i'm going to get into i'm going to i'm going to get i'm going to i'm going to start cooking let, you know so, yeah he's still railing yeah, man. Yeah, let, yeah. Let, let, yeah. Let him do his so thing. in a lot of religions in a lot of history in a lot of mythologies there are, and even spiritual traditions of all kinds, there is this idea that, yes, while individually speaking, yes, you are nothing more than just a little speck, a little spectator, a little player in this big game, you also need to realize, once you realize that you are part of something bigger that's interconnected, you then start to realize that even if you're if your achievements throughout your current life or you believe in multiple lives, whatever, just to say this is for the basic people, if your achievements in your current life, okay, even though they may seem small to you and in the grand scheme of, in the grand scheme of things, these small things compile with other multiple small insignificant things that when bonded together become this massive one that now becomes this interconnected web of infinite potential and beauty.
and variety. And then at that point, you realize to yourself why in the in why great sages like Buddha or Krishna, or even you could go as far as Hermes, uh, Trismegistus, and and even Jesus, okay? All these people, there's a reason why they all say the the idea that, you know, the kingdom of heaven is in you, but also outside of you. It's because of that. It's not being, it's not religious jargon. It's stating a fact, but they are worded in such a way that the common man will interpret it in the way that your message gets across. But to those who can perceive more, they will truly understand what you mean, which is that you are nothing yet everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. A meaningless speck, yet the most important spectator or player in this entire game, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. at once. And that is the one, and that is the reason why scientists are always struggling with the concept of the origin of the universe because they have half the answers. The other half, the only way you can acquire it is if you take spirituality into account. This is a lot of things that a lot of people in alternative theories have realized. And even outside of the alternative theories, genuine scientists who don't say this publicly because they know it will screw their careers over, but in private will tell you the same thing. And that is, look, when you take spirituality into account, it and if you combine spirituality and science together, all of a yeah, sudden the answer is easily presented. Sense. Yes, absolutely. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's scary. I won't lie. At first it is fucking terrifying. You know, when you dig into these rabbit holes, but after a while, if you progress through it one step at a time, you analyze the data as it comes and you corroborate that evidence and you don't let yourself be led by others and become inquisitive not to the point of arrogance, but in the humble way. Just focus on acquiring and deciphering the data and do it for your own self-personal development. Don't do it for others. Do it for your fucking self. If you do that, if everybody said that, guess what happens? We get better human beings overall. Now, I'm not going to say there's that that means it'll eliminate all the evil bastards. No. They're no. always going to be around, unfortunately. It's just a, it's, it's an unfortunate. It's, good. it's also system, good this know? way. We always yeah. need competition. I, I, I mean, nature, yeah. may, you know, we, mm -hmm. we need. But the thing that, and that you just beautifully described yeah. in, in your poetic uh, derailing is, is absolutely Thank spot you, sir. on. No, absolutely. I, I, I am the that. tangent king after all. You are the, <laughs> the most eloquent tangent king uh, of, of them all.